I was really quite uh, mystified when I came in to the chapel on the first day and I viewed this beautiful artistic masterpiece. You look at it and you just see, there's our Lord, the Son of God and His Mother. And um, you just see their, their sorrow and their pain um, in a completely um, visual and encapsulating way. The effect of seeing a mother holding her dead son in her lap uh, just goes beyond just the mere carved piece of marble. God speaks to different people in different ways and there's some very visual people out there. They're able to see Jesus' pain, see Mary's pain, see how they're united, how they were united in life and now in death and ultimately eternal life. So it's a prayer without words. You can't describe what you feel inside. It's something innate in all of us that we all feel when we see an image like this, when we see sacred art like this. A work like this, like the Pieta, draws Catholics, non-Catholics, believers, non-believers into the beauty of what Michelangelo wished to portray. If you look at the face of the Blessed Virgin Mary in that statue, she can't speak. It's so intense, but you can tell her sorrow. She remembers, I think, her son as an infant, and the time she played with him as a little boy, and the times she was teaching him, and then as a young boy and a man, and now he lays on her lap. At first when I look at the image I feel sad because um, when you encounter the, the death of a loved one, a family member, or a friend, the initial reaction is one of sadness so um, I feel sad but then you look at the image and how Our Lady is holding her her son and, and it's comforting. If you look at the statue itself uh, the head of the Madonna is just downcast, somber looking, but not so sad. And she seems to be balancing her son on her lap, but it's almost like floating in air. But I think the secret of the invitation is Mary's left hand inviting, beckoning us to join her in that moment of grief in preparation for the joy of the resurrection. But there's also hope, because we live at a time where we know the story, that three days after he died, he rose again from the dead. He overcame death, not only for himself, but for all of us. He gave his life for us. And sometimes those are just words, but when we really think deeply about it, um, that, is a, that is an overwhelming concept. When he's laying there dead, it's because of me. And yet, he rose again and promised me eternal life if I want to be with him. It has meant so much for all the parishioners who have seen it, because each one has, uh, when they're viewing it, uh, goes away with uh, some spiritual uh, refreshment or a consolation that seeing this great work of art which has meant so much for so many millions of people throughout the history and the life of the church. It's important for um, this image to be reproduced and placed around the country, around the world, so that people who might not otherwise have the chance to actually visit Rome for you know, whatever reasons, they can actually go see it and have the chance to be moved. Many people can't make a pilgrimage to Rome to see the original statue. But more important than that, you can get very close to this image. I first saw the statue in Rome. It was one of the best pieces of artwork that was there at the Vatican, I thought. But I couldn't get close to it. Seeing the Pieta here, just being able to go up and touch the Pieta was uh, so exciting. You can get very close to Jesus' face. You can touch the wounds in his hands, and his side, and his feet and that really drives home what he did for me personally.
imagine how many individuals will be able to see the beauty and be absorbed into the mystery of what this sculpture uh, portrays.